Welcome into Cluster Fun. Danny Cunningham, Judd Zolgad, a bottle of wine. Judd's fired up, but luckily for him, this is a Major League Baseball umpire-free zone. Oh, no. I can't talk about the fact that... Well, no, there just aren't any here. You can oh, talk oh I you thought want. you were saying I couldn't talk about oh, no, the fact... Oh, no, talk away, but there, that there are no umpires Corey walking Blazer, through that door. Whoever the hell Corey Blazer is was a joke behind at the plate last night in Cleveland, and tonight it gets one-upped by the fact we have that moron Laz Diaz umpiring <laughs> the game. How bad... Is it when a major storyline to me going into a regular season baseball game in June is the fact that the guy who had first base last night, obviously in the rotation, is going to have the plate tonight. And Laz Diaz, Laz Diaz and C.B. Buckner, Danny Cunningham, are this side of our good friend Angel the Incompetent Hernandez. Did you see the call he didn't make last night? Yes, I did. It's I don't understand this. I don't, I don't get it. The electronic strike zone makes sense. But I keep telling these guys, if they're not going to go to that, let's just decide on a handful of or a group of guys that can have the plate who aren't just imbeciles, mm -hmm. and then pay them a lot more. Yeah. And tell the union, buzz off. <laughs> Angel Hernandez should be fired. Yeah, I don't understand how he Buckner, still has a job. C.B. Buckner should be fired. Sure. There, there's about four that should just be fired. Um, Joe West. The cowboy Joe West. Joe West, yeah. should, he, force him out. Yeah. I don't know Sports why is, I've never understood this. When it comes to your job, on the field, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not talking about I'm not talking about secretaries or people. Sports is built on one thing: age discrimination. Yes, absolutely. Like you can't sue if you can't do your job. Mm -hmm. If if I am a quarterback and I get old and I get forced out, it's because I'm getting old. Yeah, that's age discrimination. Okay, but it's because I can't do my job. Yeah, like exactly. Joe West can't do. Joe West is not good. I would tell Joe and Angel. Because the the problem with Angel is he sued the league a while back because and, he didn't get postseason yes, games. Right? Yes, so I would tell I would actually file suits on their behalf if I was baseball and say I've done it for you and now you're fired. Let's see how this goes down in, in court. Yeah, because if you're a I've lawyer, done it for you. <laughs> I would file. I would. I'm not joking. I would file suits on their behalf and mm -hmm. say it's done. Yep. Don't worry about it. I'm suing myself. For you, but my sport, <laughs> but my sport is built on your ability to do your job, and if you can't because you're old, too bad, you're done. See ya, bye. Like this is not normal. Sports is not normal life. No, it's not. It's it's absolutely not just normal. Derek Rose is getting old, right? Yes. So at some point soon, he's going to be forced out, right? Well, thing old. Yes. Why? Because they're old. Mm -hmm. That's it's how age, it works. It's age discrimination. Yes. It's how they work. Yes, absolutely. You can't play until you're fifty. You just can't. I would love to be a lawyer especially with refs and umps, I would love to to represent the league in those cases because basically I think they're slam dunk wins. So what did you for have the league, an, I should what did you have an issue with last night? Um oh, let me see here. And Judd the the Twins were in Cleveland last night. Judd did keep score. The best baseball writer I know kept score up the game. Ladies and gentlemen, while you were were watching baseball or cutting the grass, I was scoring Consider that for a second. I'm nearly 50. And this is not show and tell. We've got show and tell yeah. later in the show. Oh, this is not show and tell. Show and tell. Uh, so, so last night, um, our guy, Devin Smeltzer, faces in the, let me get this right, Danny, in the bottom of the fifth. Roberto Perez mm -hmm. flies out to right. Jake Bowers, DHing in the eight hole, strikes out swinging. Leonis Martin, who is playing center field and batting ninth, comes up, works the count to, well, to three and two. Good at bat. Uh, ball four, I believe, was a strike, but not to Corey Blazer. Sure. Because he doesn't have an idea of what the strike zone is. He walks, and then your guy, Francisco Lindor, comes up and hits a two-run bomb after that. So, but it's going to be worse. for my home run derby team. It's going to be worse tonight. Laz Diaz is going to be... The Corey Blazer is going to look like he belongs in Cooperstown, but by the time this joke is done tonight. So you're excited for 6-10 tonight when first pitch comes, right? I'll be watching. I don't know if I'm going to keep score or not. Uh, but I think you have to. I think that you've set a precedent. You have to keep score now. I got a lot of score sheets here. Well, I mean, you have but the, home for you a have the serious home stand. you have the serious observers scorecard here. Yeah. In fact, I, I got this at Target Field like, like three years back, mm -hmm. thirty bucks, but it's great. Um, the thing I'm most curious about tonight, and I'm very serious here, is Martin Perez. Sure. Does he bounce back strong? I'm, he was what he pitched on Thursday night in Tampa when they got obliterated. I think fourteen to three was Correct. the final score. Correct. My question is, does he come back strong? And, and if he doesn't have a great game, it's not the end of the world. 
But I do think that you are curious now. Uh-huh. And if he has another bad start, okay, now have teams started to figure something out with him? And does that lead to three bad starts? So I, Martin Perez internally with the Twins, he can answer a lot of questions by coming out and, as the kids say, shoving against the Indians tonight. He certainly couldn't. It's not as if he's going up against a, a tough lineup. I think last night the Indians hit four home runs, and that was something that no one's really seen from them throughout much of this season. So I that one though, that one around. that snuck around what the right field foul pole by Jake Bowers. Mm-hmm. That was a little doink. That was a laser though. I mean, he hit it hard. He just yeah. didn't get it in the air. Yeah. And then yesterday also organized team activities. Minnesota Vikings. Does this matter at all? Or do we make, as a football society, do we make too big of a deal of OTAs? It matters a lot for the purposes that, that the team, the teams use this for now. Mm-hmm. It's very important. We interpret it all wrong. So, like, what we take How away... How should it be interpreted? Uh, the, the entire off-season program, which includes lifting, classroom, and on-field work, to me, is all about installing systems. Mm-hmm. And training camp, you know... You used to show up at training camp mid-July and install everything, right? Yeah. Well, you don't now. Mm-hmm. So I think from a coaching perspective, you get you basically start your install now, which is important. Sure. Uh, our problem is we try and interpret that as as watching individual players and then asking coaches about that. And personally, to me, right now means nothing. Does Stefan Diggs not being there matter to you? Yes, because. To me, it indicates something. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I guess you you could debate: does him does him not being here and working with cousins matter a lot? I don't know on that. It might. I sure. don't know. But you know, he didn't show up. He didn't show up. He didn't show up. He showed up for one day uh, or two days and mm-hmm. basically said. I bought a house or I've got house problems. There was some logistical issue. Which now had. turns out to be the laziest excuse in the world because then he wasn't there again yesterday. Mm-hmm. To me, this is telling us something, uh, combined with the fact that, was it his brother who put on Instagram or tweeted? Was his brother, yeah, on Instagram. In, uh, a Red- picture of him in a Washington Redskins uniform. Okay. So there's something, there's something here, I think. Sure. I don't know what, but... Is it going to fracture his ability to operate in this offense? I don't think so. No, it won't. But there's definitely something that we don't know and we're not going to be told. All right, show and tell. What do you have for me today? Oh, so you'll like this. So in 1974, or 72, the Twins uh, um, owner at the time, a guy by the name of Calvin Griffith, Mm -hmm. was uh, trying to get, basically trying to get the local media, which at that time was what, the, the Strip. The Tribune, the Star, Pioneer Press, the papers on his side, okay? So he had this commission for the cover of the media guide. And what this is is drawings of all the sports writers in town who covered the Twins at the time. That's awesome. Including a young and our own Patrick Royce. Wow. Who who looks like the kid in Animal House uh-huh. yeah. who got in all the trouble. Yeah. Does he not? So, okay, so there's Patrick. Let's see, where is, uh, where is uh, 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 Sid? Sid's here prominently somewhere as well. Um, there's Sid. Halsey Hall, who, who was at, at the time a very uh, famous Twins commentator on WCCO radio. But, yeah, I just love that picture of Patrick. It looks like, what, what's the line about growing up? I'm not fat, sure. you... It's oh, uh, fat, drunk, and stupid, stupid. in a way yeah. to go through life. Yes, exactly right. So, yes, this was the Twins' attempt in 1972 to get the local media on it, their side. The other funny thing about this guide, Danny, mm-hmm. is it's 68 pages. Like, that's a media guide, 1972. 68 pages. Right, 69 if you count the back cover. All right, very nice. Very nice indeed. Thanks for watching Cluster Fun. We'll be back tomorrow reviewing Game 3 of the NBA Finals. I'm Danny Cunningham. That's Judd Zolgad. Talk to you then.